New data shows young Americans looking to buy a home are getting priced out of the market. The National Association of Realtors reports the average age of a repeat home buyer this year was 58, barely down from a, its record high of 59. And that means first time home buyers are competing with older buyers with more established financial lives. Let's bring in ABC's Brad Milkey, host of the Start Here podcast, for more on that. Brad, how are these dynamics impacting young, aspiring homeowners? Yeah, I mean, the issue here is, that, first of all, you have this massive deficit in housing, right? There's just not enough houses being built in the U.S. for people that want them. Freddie Mac, the government sponsor company that guarantees a lot of mortgages, said there are three million fewer houses right now than Americans would pay for, Americans would buy. So that's already one issue. Secondly, you have this number that you just described, right? That, that the average age of a repeat home buyer is 58 years old, 59 years old. So you got a lot of people who are uh, baby boomers competing with millennials for sometimes the same house. So we talked to a 29-year-old guy, he's named Dylan, just got married. He and his wife make a combined income of like $200,000 a year. So by any stretch of like American history, they are doing just fine. He took one look around the two bedrooms in his community and was like, oh, there's no chance, absolutely no chance I could afford a house right now. And some of the reasons is because these 58, 59, 60-year-old home buyers are looking at similar houses. Why? Well, because at that stage, a lot of people are looking to downsize. Right. Maybe like, you know, your kids just moved out. And so now you're like, we can be a little bit simpler here. Well, who's going to be a better buyer, Diane? Who's going to be the more attractive buyer? The newlyweds that don't really have an established financial life, a big nest egg, or... The couple that just sold their much larger house. Like, th those are the people that are really, you know, competing and winning some of these sort of bidding wars, and that's driving up the market for everyone right But now. why is that new? Are these houses a lot more expensive than they used to be? Well, here's the thing, is that you got these sort of the generational thing that's happening. Millennials and baby boomers, the two largest generations in American history, are kind of fighting in some cases over these houses. The thing that's changed, though, in the last year is interest rates, mm. right? That is the thing that has just absolutely exploded this market. So you had interest rates a year ago were close to 3%. Now they've gone up to, you know, 6, 7, 8%. Just uh, this month, they are at 7.5%. And that sounds like a lot of numbers, Brad. What are you talking about? For a half million dollar house, that can mean that your mortgage will cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars more over the life of your mortgage. So that just, it's a fundamental difference. And what that means is that you've now got these people that own these two bedroom houses that Dylan would love to buy. They don't wanna move, right? They don't wanna move out of their house where maybe 10 years ago they bought this house with this 3% mortgage. It's fantastic. Would you really wanna move into a slightly larger house? Cool, maybe you got some kids, maybe you want an extra bedroom or two, but would you really wanna double your monthly mortgage in like payments to live in that place? No, so people at this point do not wanna move out of their houses. And that is why so there's these, a huge backlog. These smaller houses are harder to find yep. than they used to be. Yeah. So what does this mean for Americans looking to buy or sell their home for that matter? Well, this is the thing because you've now got a generation of Americans who are realizing, oh shoot, my starter house might actually be my, my forever. forever house. Yeah. And this was not what I was planning on. Then you have people behind them, these younger people being like, oh, so that means I have nowhere to buy. And so we talked to several economists about this and they basically said for one, do not expect these interest rates to ever go back to 3% in the foreseeable future. That's just not a thing. It's not going to go down that much. It might go down a little bit in the next few years, but is that really worth waiting around for to sort of start your home buying life? The one thing they did say is because of all this backlog right now, rental rates for renters are actually more competitive. That is a place where you can potentially save money. And so the advice that we got sort of over and over was if you can save this is a good time to do it as a renter, but then eventually you might have to take the plunge into this much more expensive housing market than just a few years ago. All right, Brad Milkey, thank you. Thanks. And to hear Brad dive into this three-part series on real estate called Priced Out, uh, you can check that out on Start Here and, of course, lots of other great stories. New episodes drop weekday mornings at 6 Eastern wherever you get your podcasts. Brad, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.